we've been doing a series called helps from anyone wants to fill in helps for our journey from promise okay well, let's say that again helps for our journey from promise to fulfillment I believe that everyone, thank you. I believe everyone in this room is waiting on God for something. Yes. yes. If you're not, then you're not breathing. Yes. If you're breathing, then we have things that we are looking forward to from God. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And God is a God who loves to, in, you know, send us invitations in the form of promises. God is a God of invitation. He likes to invite us to a deeper journey with Him. And one of his ways of summoning us to greater depth is by exciting us about promises. Mm-hmm. Especially with regards to areas where we want to break through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if there, is a, if there is a problem, there are promises that he has in his heart to talk to you about. There are provisions he wants to release so that we can go forward. Why do we need help? <laughs> Because there is warfare between promise and fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And in the warfare... much more than just breakthrough, we encounter the God of breakthrough more richly. God is always more interested in making us more like Himself. Much more than even the breakthroughs, He wants us to encounter more deeply the God of the breakthroughs. Hallelujah. When I was young in the Lord, I used to have this, you know, and many of you, you would, would could, I'm sure, relate with it. I used to think if only this answer of my heart can, this question of my heart can be answered, I'll break through. And so one would go from question to question to talking to servants of God and secretly thinking if this thing troubling my heart can be answered, I'll break through. But as the years rolled by, I realized that the biggest answer is the answer called spiritual growth. Amen. Much more than many of the answers we want answered. If we could just set our heart to growing in the Lord, You know, many questions troubling us right now would not even trouble us at all. <laughs> As we grow in the Lord, certain things will just die down and stop bothering you and bothering me. Spiritual growth is the biggest answer that we need. 3 John 2 says that, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Yeah? Can, can we all read that together? You know, we, we uh, wrestle so much to make the bank balance prosper. We can wrestle so much to make our fitness, physical fitness prosper. But most of us don't wrestle to make our inner man prosper. And God is saying if your inner man prospers, Everything connected to you has to prosper and you'll be in good health. So God's answer to wholeness, God's answer to wholeness and blessing is our inner man prospering. And we can be thinking about so many things secretly that if this gets sorted out, I'll prosper. If this gets sorted out, I'll prosper. But God is saying, if you really want prosperity, there has to be a wholeness in your internal person. The wholeness of the internal person invades the chaos outside. The wholeness inside opens the door for wholeness outside. For God to put things into place. So, my encouragement to you is pursue prosperity for the inner person. I'm very grateful to God for the last many years, you know, I have, I've not chased, I've not chased, you know, people with power or money, but I've chased people with revelation. Because this got stuck to me as a young man. That if my soul can prosper, everything connected to me has to prosper. And I'll be in good health and I can be useful to my God. So I, I have only pursued people with revelation. I'm grateful for friends who could be rich and powerful, but I have not pursued people with power and riches. But I pursued servants of God with revelations because I have, I'm convinced if I can work with the revelation that my inner man can prosper, everything connected to me has to prosper. I have to be in good health. And I will be useful to my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And God wants us to have experiential knowledge of Him. He doesn't want us to just hear things. He wants us to taste the power of His ways. Hallelujah. He wants us to have experiential knowledge. Not just, you read something. He, just, he doesn't want to remain in the realm of our information. He wants that we experience this God. It's not enough to be informed, He's my shield. We need to keep encountering Jesus, my shield, on the platform, my experiences. So, I say a lot of things to you about, about what worship does. One of the things also it does is it deals with discouraging inner voices. And we all need help with voices that come and discourage us. <laughs> there are voices from within, there are voices from outside. There is just so much always trying to discourage us from pressing on deeper into the things of God. Every time God excites us about something and we start running in it, the devil comes with full steam, full force <laughs> to hit hard. And then we can, we can lose hope. Yeah. And the devil is the accuser of the, the brethren. The devil accuses God in our head day and night. If God was good, why didn't you get a promotion? If God was good, why didn't you marry? If God was good, why did you not have a child? It was so many years. If God was good, why is your child sick? And the list goes on and on and on. So he accuses God day and night in our head. He accuses our brothers and sisters in our head day and night. And the worst part is he accuses us in our own head day and night. You are a useless father. You are a bad father. You are a bad husband. You are a good pastor. You see. So what do we do with these voices always hitting us? You're not a good engineer, man. He's a good engineer, but you see, how does he deal with this? The fellow is doing working so hard, but he didn't get that one crore project, and the devil beats him up. You're a useless sales guy. How do you deal with that? There's just so much out there. How do you deal with these voices? Worship has a way. God gets a way through worship to silence voices. That are from the pit of hell and discouraging you to go into your destiny. And worship is much more than the song, but the songs are important. Hallelujah. Worship is about presenting ourselves to God. It's about presenting ourselves to God. Strength is released when we do what is prescribed. Strength is released from heaven when we do what's prescribed. God said, you'll enter my gates with? Thanks. thanks. Hallelujah. You'll enter my gates with thanks. You'll enter my gates with? Praise. In the Psalms we are told, I will declare the wonders of God in the congregation of the people of God. I will declare the mighty acts of God. Are we paying the price of declaring the mighty works of God, the mighty acts of God? Do we take time to testify the goodness of God? Do we take time to strengthen ourselves with the promises of God? There is so much that's, that is made available to us. I said to you, we are all priests unto God. Hallelujah. 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 But then the priests in the old covenant, they were not allowed to appear before God empty-handed. It was very clear that if they had to appear before God, they had to take some sacrifices and offerings. So, but you see, the priest of the new covenant... We struggle to even understand what are the sacrifices we need to take, what are the offerings we need to take. So often we show up empty-handed. Mm. And last time we talked about being dressed for worship. So I hope today you are dressed for worship and you understand what it means to be dressed for worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't want it to be some, some Christian pop culture line you heard by some smart singer. I hope now it means much more to you. Are you clothed for worship? We spoke about the clothing of the priest of the new covenant. Humility. Are you clothed with humility? Are you clothed with salvation? Are you clothed with righteousness of God? Are you clothed with power 
of the Holy Spirit. And I've been telling you that there are sacrifices and there are offerings we have to present to God. We must always appear before God. When we come to God, we are priests. We must bring something and come. You know, Hutovi has a very interesting line he says to people who have to visit his house. He says, when you come to my house, knock with your shoulder. Knock the door with your shoulders. Your hand should have some good stuff for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's interesting. One. So, so Hutovi has made this line popular. If you come to my house, knock the door with your shoulder. shoulder. Your hand should be full with goodies for me. <laughs> Nonsense, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so your hands should be full of good things. So if a man, a brother, is happy to see us show up with something in a hand to offer, how much more God desires that when we come to Him, we bring something. And God always expects out of the fullness of what He has given us. God always gives us in abundance and then says, Out of all that I've given you, now come and bring something yes. and give it to me. You know, my father, he's the old school. And uh, whenever he will go to anyone's house with me, he will always trouble me. He'll stop me somewhere on the road and say, I need to buy bananas. I need to buy apples. I need to buy something. I said, Dad, why can't we just go to their house? <laughs> he says, we were taught by our parents that never show up to anyone's house empty-handed. You see, we don't, we, you know, some of this old school stuff is good. There's wisdom in that. So he, he, he always does that. Even this week when you're going somewhere to meet some family, he, he was determined to buy something. I don't know if he succeeded. Did he succeed? Did he succeed? Oh, okay. He, yeah, he somehow didn't get that fruit wala. <laughs> he really tried. He even caught the people with whom we're going, whom we're visiting. Can you show me some place to buy fruits? He didn't succeed, but he tried. He was taught by his father in the 1940s and 50s that when you go to someone's house, don't go empty handed. I don't know if blessing their generation understands that, but yes, we do. Okay, we are the sandwich generation between you and them. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the point is this: God wants priests to not come empty under him. He says, "Are the abundance of so much that I have given you, bring something and come. Or the abundance of so much I have given you, come with something." So we talked about. So let's just remind ourselves and go to the one Peter, please. One Peter two. Four. And this is talking about priests like us. And coming to him, maybe you can see verse one as well, yeah. Suresh, yeah. Therefore, putting aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Okay. Like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that you may grow, that you may grow uh, in respect to salvation, if you've tasted the kindness of the Lord, and coming to Him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer up what? Spiritual sacrifice. sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. As a young believer, I often heard my spiritual father say to me stuff that went over my head. And some things I understood, something went over my head. But, but you know, those statements stuck with me. It's like, you know, you read tweets, they go over your head, but they stick to you. Yes. Does it happen to anybody else? Yes. You can read stuff, you understand, but it sticks to you. So I remember one thing that my spiritual father used to always say, even though it used to go in my head, was if you don't give acceptable worship to God, it's going to hurt your life. If you don't learn to give God acceptable sacrifices and offerings, it's going to hurt your life. You have to learn to offer to God sacrifices and offerings that are acceptable in His sight. It will greatly prosper your intimacy with God. And, and I would find it amazing to hear all this stuff. And then I would be 
Sounds great, man, but what are these things to offer? We don't have any animals to offer like the guys of the old covenant. So let's talk about what are the, you know, last time we concluded this, if we are not clothed for worship, whatever you offer is, a, is not acceptable. Yes. Right? Yes. If you're not clothed with humility, the righteousness of Christ, salvation, salvation attitude of salvation, and if you're not clothed with power of the Holy Spirit, our offerings are not acceptable. Mm, yeah. Imagine being self-righteous and then, and then giving, giving God songs of praise. That is noise for His ears. Mm, yeah. Imagine walking in pride <laughs> and giving a song of praise to God. That's noise for God. Trying to save yourself and arresting in the Savior's work, that's noise when we give that thanksgiving to God. Living out of fear and not knowing the power of the Holy Spirit and we do stuff, that's not acceptable. We produce a lot of dead works. Hebrews says, why do you keep producing dead works? Dead works are works we do which are not in the power of the Holy Spirit. The works we do to please God in our flesh are dead works. And God says, they don't please me. What are dead works? Things we do to please God in our own flesh. They're dead works. But things done in spite of the power of the Holy Spirit, that God says, I like that. I like that. Yeah. So, okay, let's look at what are the, some spiritual sacrifices. Let's look at some sacrifices and offerings that He likes. And let's start giving them to Him. We've looked at, uh, we looked at uh, the sacrifice of praise, right? Look, okay, so let's just see that again. Hebrews 3. Sorry, it's Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Okay. Through Christ, let us continually offer. It's continually. Please, let's read, let's keep in mind the word continually. Mm. Not once in a while. Let us. Continually, continually means as a lifestyle. Okay? Continually means as a lifestyle. lifestyle. Through Christ, let us continually offer up what? A sacrifice of praise to God. So one sacrifice that God is looking for, a spiritual sacrifice that God is looking for, is a sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. And He wants us to offer it? Continually. No, only when things go my way. That's what we do most of the time, right? Yes. Lord, if you do what I want, I'll praise you. If you don't do what I want, I'm going to murmur. I'm, going to, I'm not going to praise you. I'm going to murmur in your presence. But God is saying, whether things go your way or not, I want you to continually offer up sacrifice of praise. praise. And David would put it like this. I'll bless the Lord at... All times, His praise will continually be in my mouth. Whether things go my way or not, whether things go expected or not, God is good. He's gracious. So I will praise Him all the time. So through Christ, let us continually, as a lifestyle, offer our sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lip that gives thanks to His name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's next? Can you show me? What's next? Ah, another sacrifice we see here that God likes. Do not neglect doing good. good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Mm. Worshipping God with our substance is also a sacrifice with which He is pleased. Yeah. Now, it is one of the biggest problems we find is the modern day church, people don't want to open up their homes for hospitality. <laughs> it costs too much, it seems nowadays. Hospitality has become a rare, getting a more and more rare commodity in the churches. Hospitality seems to be costing too much now. Do you have an open home? Is your home open to brothers and sisters who are suffering and struggling? Can they sometimes come and find refuge and refreshing in your home? I find hospitality the big issue nowadays. Even if one is passing through a city and you tell people, can I come and stay one day with you? Generally, the answers are not yes. I work, my wife work. 
Sorry. Why? Because you see, we are not realizing that these are also spiritual sacrifices which God is well pleased with. Sacrifices can cost. But there is grace available to pay the cost. Hallelujah. Do not neglect doing good. good. <laughs> and sharing. Now the sharing is can really hit us. Sharing. Sharing. God is saying, I want you to share. If I have given an abundance of things, share with those who have less. Share. It's a, I consider sacrifice. Do good to people. Worship me with your substance. When we do good and share and when we are generous with the resources God has given us, with the substance God has given us, it is an act of worship to God. It's an acceptable sacrifice. It's a spiritual sacrifice to God. <coughs> do hospitality without complaint, the Bible says. Because God knows that Things like hospitality, they can start biting us. Mm. God is saying, I know it's not easy on you, but do it without complaint. You know, people think just because, you know, I'm the pastor, I am enjoying all the hospitality. No, I'm not always enjoying all the hospitality we have to do. But you do it without complaint by the grace of God because God delights in such sacrifices. I remember uh, once we, we had um, an old lady from Kerala call up and say, I want to come and stay a month with you. I have some visa work that is stuck up. The day she called, my wife had just been discharged from the hospital for a surgery. Everything we wanted to say no to her. And I just said, I'll call you back, auntie. And I put the phone down. And I prayed and, and the Lord said to me, my son, be hospital without complaint. That was the most difficult, one of the difficult calls I've made back to a person. It's very convenient to say, sorry, auntie. Find a hotel. <laughs> I prayed and God said, no, be hospital without Complained. So I called her back and said, you can come and stay a month with us. And I praise God for a wife who was willing. And we really don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> because I have a wife who couldn't move for a week. My wife had to rest for a week. So, but we had the lady with us. And we said, this, you can use the house. <laughs> but the lady in the house can't serve you. But you can use the house. And what's amazing is that she took over and served my wife the whole week. God is exceedingly abundantly capable of doing more than we can ask or imagine. <laughs> God, was, God was sending help for my wife and I was thinking as an old, old woman that wants help. <laughs> my wife was more loved and comforted and helped in that week than if she would not have come. God's ways of past are finding out. And after one week, Vasu could, Vasu was able to move around and, and she also could serve this auntie. But the first week, it was this auntie serving my wife. And I never thought it was going to turn out like this. I, 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 for me, my, for my mind, it was even difficult to fathom how this is going to work. <laughs> All I'd heard was from the Holy Spirit, be hospital without complaint. And I still remember, walk, I brought her to the house and I said, auntie, my wife is bedridden for a week. This is the house, this is your room, this is the kitchen. Enjoy yourself. And I don't know how to cook. <laughs> so, don't expect me to cook for you. I'm not Utovi. Yeah? And she took such, and I was just shocked. She just, she just uh, took such good care of my wife in that week. You know, we couldn't have done that. I couldn't have done that for my wife. 
what she did for my wife. It's amazing. God's amazing. The way he thinks. The way, his wisdom is a manifold wisdom. He strikes so many, so many birds with one stone. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, precious ones. Let's take grace and ask God to help us and do things that he wants us to do. Doing good and sharing our spiritual sacrifices with God as well. Please, we offer him. We offer these things to him. And you know how much it touches people. Hospitality can have a deep impact on people. Someone stays one week with you. And if you're walking with God, in that one week, their life can be changed around. Because of the presence of God and the word of God in your heart. It can have a radical impact on the whole journey. One week is a big time. And I'm saying this again too. I have not always enjoyed having people stay in my house. But me and my wife have, have set our heart to open up our house to the people of God. Yes. Why? Because God loves it. It's not about us, it's about Him. Right. And if He says, be hospital without complaint, let's be hospital without complaint because we belong to Him. <laughs> we belong to ourselves, we belong to God. Hallelujah. All right, uh, let's look at a few other spiritual sacrifices. So, Worship Him with your substance. Worship Him with your resources. Hallelujah. The second is the praise and then the and then sacrifice of worship with your substance. Yeah, Let's carry on. Are there a few more good stuff we can worship Him with? Sacrifice of sacrifices that He likes in worship. Mm. He wants us to worship Him with demonstrations of praise. He wants us to worship Him with demonstrations of praise. Bring, bring out those testimonies. Bring out those testimonies. Demonstrate to the world the praises of God in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Worship Him with their testimony. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Demonstrations of praise. 1 Peter 2, 9. Give those demonstrations of praise. They're spiritual sacrifices. Demonstrations of praise. We know when, I'll, when by the grace of God we do things that raise a praise to His name, that's beautiful worship to God. When, when acts are done through a life inspired by the Holy Spirit that produce thanksgiving to God, praises to His name, there's a beautiful sacrifice of worship. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Nine, verse nine. Yes. yes. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim, proclaim excellence. the excellences. You may demonstrate the excellences of him who's called your darkness to his marvelous light. God wants our lives to proclaim and demonstrate the excellences of this God. He wants our acts to, to produce many thanksgiving to His name. You know, the best um, givings are those where all the thanksgiving goes to God. So, for example, you know, if, if uh, Brijesh needs to get a surgery done and he has no money, and I give him money, but he's only thanking me, there's something wrong with that. But it should be done in a way that Brijesh is going, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, how are we going to work that out in, in, is a very important part of worship. <laughs> how the money is given to him will determine whether he's going to keep thanking me or he's going to thank Christ. If he's, if he's constantly from his heart thinking Christ for that money for the surgery, something that I did with that money becomes an act of worship. But if I gave him money in a manner that, Bridget, I'm the good guy. 
I am the kind guy. Remember me. You see how virtuous I am? You see how kind I am? Have you seen a kind person like me? Don't forget I helped you in a need, boy. <laughs> What's happening? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But there is no thanksgiving to God. There's a verse which says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they would glorify, they would, they would see a good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify whom? Father in heaven. Glorify me or glorify the Father in heaven. Hallelujah. So, you know, light is there. God has put light in all of us. God's light is in all of us. In some, the light is a greater measure, in some, the light is a lesser measure, but the light is there. <laughs> shine forth, reflect. Can you say that again? What that was? Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works and your glor- and glorify your Father in heaven. It's a very interesting line. They see your good works and they don't pat your back but they glorify God. Wow. That's a sacrifice of praise right there. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they see your good works but they're not patting your back. You've done it in such wisdom, with such a heart that they're not patting your back, mm. they are saying, man, this one, this guy, it's God. This is God. Hallelujah. Only God could have moved the heart of this guy to favor me. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, many times um, in conversations, we can end up saying, you know, my boss is really good. My boss treats me very well. Somewhere we are stealing glory from God. The, it is God who has given you favor with your boss, and so your boss is treating you well. Yes. So there's something wrong when believers say, my boss, is, my boss is really good. My boss treats you very well. Something wrong with that. Your boss treats you so well because God has favored you in their eyes. Amen. Amen. How are we doing these good acts? Are they drawing glory to us? Or are they producing glory and thanksgiving for His name? Even Corinthians says that the goal of all our generosity with our substance is that many thanksgiving is produced to God. Our our generosity is successful when the recipient ends up praising God, not us. Hallelujah. They're convinced God moved their hearts to favor me. Hallelujah. I remember we had sent some money to one missionary and and uh, he called up Hutovi and told Hutovi that the day I, you know, he was so grateful for the money and he was convinced from God. You know why? The day the money reached him, they had no money to buy rice. They had no money to eat a meal. That's the day the money from the church they got in their hand. And they were convinced it's not India of church. It is God. <laughs> because they were crying since the morning as a family. Lord, send us food to eat. And you know, I was so delighted. Because suddenly with that guy acknowledging this is God, not us, the money became a spiritual sacrifice to God. Hallelujah. 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 Demonstrations of praise. Demonstrations of praise. Demonstrations of praise. Our life must produce demonstrations for His praise. We looked at our wealth. Worship Him with a substance. We, we saw in Hebrews, but we can also see another, another verse. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Yes, honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of your produce. Next. So your barns will fill with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord with your with your wealth. Honor the Lord with your wealth. I would encourage you. Give tithes and offerings. Give tithes not because I'm the pastor here. You know, when Mohan left this church, 
and went to Bangalore. I told Mohan, don't give tithes here, give tithe to your church in Bangalore. Didn't I tell you, Mohan? He wanted to give it here because of his love for me and the church. I said, no, don't give it here. Give it to the AG Bangalore church. I told you, didn't I, Mohan? Right. Because it's about the ways of God. It's not about who benefits. He will benefit as long as he honors the ways of God. Give your tithes to the local church where you are fed and nourished. Yes. Give offerings anywhere the Holy Spirit leads you. Give. Give with your substance. Open your house to people. Hospitality is a great thing. You want young people in the church to prosper. Married people, we should open up more of our homes to them. They'll prosper so much more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship the substance. And, and may our worship with our substance is acceptable when it produces a lot of thanksgiving to God. People are not saying, you are the great guy. They are saying, God, thank you for moving Nirej Malik's heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a great thing. You know, whenever I give money to someone, my wife says, only God could have done that. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? My wife wants to give to everybody all the time. You know? So if I let her have her way, it would be a big problem. So my wife wants to give all the time to everybody. So, but I'm the guy who says, hang on. Let's find out what the Lord is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying. <laughs> and so when, when I end up saying to her, all right, let's do this. She's like, man, that must be God. <laughs> do people, do you, do, do people, are we doing it in a way that people are getting convinced this God showed up for me today. It's not them. God showed up for me. It's not them. God showed up for me. He cares. He's my good father. He cares for my heart. He showed up for me. You know, when I became a pastor, I thought God will not ask me to give financial gifts to people. But he keeps surprising me. Often he says to me, you, go, you will give this amount of money to this person, this amount of money to this person. I'm like, first I used to say, but this Lord, I am, I am the full-time guy. <laughs> I says, no. You can give. Giving is not dependent on what you have in your bank. It depends on your trust in God. Do you trust His word? Do you trust His word? Giving Not dependent on what's in your bank. It's dependent on, on your trust issues with God. God said, so sparingly you will reap. Sparingly. The same God said, so bountifully and you will reap. Bountifully. So it's not about the money in the bank. It's about trusting the word of God and the promise of God, which says, so bountifully you'll reap. Bountifully. It's about honoring the voice of God. We want intimacy with the Holy Spirit, but are we willing to honor the voice of the Holy Spirit? Where does prosperity come from? Living in harmony with the voice of the Holy Spirit. So it's not about the money in the bank. It's about what's the Holy Spirit saying. On numerous occasions, I've had people say to me, when I've given a financial gift to them, they say, we should be giving it to you. Why are you giving it to me? You see. And I would say humbly, keep it. Don't block my blessing. Because when the Holy Spirit says, do something, you do it. That's where the, where the prosperity is. That's where the, where the, where the, where the fruitfulness is. Hallelujah. And we don't respond to needs. We respond to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There are so many needs in the world, precious ones. You and I can't meet every need. But God has raised up many sons and daughters to take care of many things. Hallelujah. We're not the only sons and daughters. Hallelujah. So respond to the Holy Spirit. Let's deal with the need the Holy Spirit is pressing on your heart to deal with. Hallelujah. And pray for, for your need you see, but you're not feeling burdened for it. You can pray. Lord, bless this brother or sister. Help them. Hallelujah. Raise up help for them. Mm. 
last but not the least and the most important given this is this is this is the most glorious one but the most tricky one <laughs> and we'll end with this let's go to romans 12 1 and 2 romans 12 1 and 2 the most profound sacrifice of worship the most profound sacrifice of worship that we can offer to god is offering ourselves to god unreservedly for him and his purposes the full you know when we offer ourselves as rendered sacrifice a living sacrifice to god that's the most profound and beautiful expression of worship in his eyes and paul says you can't do it in your strength but he says you can do it if you commit to the renewal of your mind you can't do this with a will power but you can do this if you commit to the renewal of your mind, mind by washing of the water of the word you can do it hallelujah hallelujah okay if i urge you brethren by the mercies of god we are, those of you have been with many years you know wherever there's a therefore we have to look what is before okay every time you see a chapter starting with therefore you need to ask the question what came before <laughs> it's linked so paul takes 11 chapter of romans and in a very structured way presents to us the gospel of grace he presents to us beautifully and powerfully this gift god has given us of salvation how rich it is and then he says what is your answer how are you going to respond to this great gift from god he says i'll tell you how you, how what can be a befitting response to this gift present yourself. yourself to god as a living sacrifice that is your acceptable act of worship in the sight of god and then he also tells us you can't do this in your own strength so he says therefore you brethren by the mercy of god present your bodies present your whole being as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to god which is your spiritual act of worship presenting ourselves unreservedly to god and his purpose is the greatest offering and sacrifice we can give to god the most difficult thing to surrender is the will <laughs> it's easy to sing the songs are important but it's easy to sing but the yielding of the will that takes a lifetime <laughs> that takes a journey that takes process hallelujah the verge you brother and do not be confirmed to the world but be transformed by reading of your mind so that you may prove what the will of god is that is good acceptable and perfect so what paul is saying is god has given you this great salvation as a gift and you should respond to this gift of god and he said the best response is allow the renewal of your mind let your mind can be washed with the scriptures so that you are able to present yourself to god as a surrendered vessel you are able to present yourself to god as a holy and living sacrifice a person who by because the renewal of his mind is empowered to come to god and say lord i belong to you i let go of all claims of ownership of my life my life now belongs to you have your way i'll do what you want <laughs> that's the most profound expression of worship and paul says you can't become that person by will power that person you can only become when you are going to keep washing yourself with the water of the word so that the holy spirit can use that word and renew your mind and make you more and more in alignment with himself so we we need to come to the place where we where by the work of the holy spirit and the word we say lord i let go of all kinds of ownership of my life the old neeraj malik is dead i am a new neeraj malik and i belong to you <laughs> i belong to you you are my lord you have all right to tell me how to live my life now here i am here is your servant tell me what you want me to do I remember once I met a young man who was very zealous for God and uh, a very intelligent man. And he said to me, he said, you know, he was just passing out of college. And he said, I am going to start two companies, he said. One company, all the money that I'll make, I'll enjoy it. 
one company, all the money I'll give for the kingdom work. Very interesting. I am going to set up two companies. One company, all the profit I'll enjoy. One company, all the profit I will pump into the kingdom of God and mission work. And I remember the Holy Spirit saying to me that, you know, tell him I want him more than both the companies. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said, you know, the Lord wants you and your will. <laughs> Your surrendered personality, buddy, more than both your companies. He wants us more than anything we can give to him, produce for him. You and I are more precious to him than anything we can do for him. Hallelujah. 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 This is just an amazing God we serve. Christ died for people, not for organizations, not for, <laughs> not for institutions. He died for people. We are the biggest treasure for God. We are the biggest treasure in His heart. <laughs> so precious ones, I pray that we will grow in giving God spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable in His sight. Then there is so much under the heading of praise. Praise we can, we can praise Him using thanksgiving. We can praise Him with song. We can praise Him with hymns. We can praise Him with the psalms. We can praise Him with spiritual songs, songs inspired by the, by the hymns and the psalms. But maybe that's for another time. What does Colossians 5.19 say? The singing of the psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs, how important that is. It's a part of our, our giving sacrifices to God of praise and adoration. Colossians, Colossians 3.16, what did it say? I've clubbed it. Uh, the sacrifice of praise and sacrifice, giving a sacrifice with praise and adoration and spiritual songs and praising with the hymns and the psalms. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. So the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Use the psalms, use hymns, use spiritual songs. Spiritual songs are songs which are inspired by the Holy Spirit. As we are people growing in light of the cross, as your people going in light of the character of God, the Holy Spirit inspires spontaneous songs. And then we can share them in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So let's close pressure. Let's just, let's just speak to the Lord.